Hey guys, OJ Albina here, and I don't know if you guys have ever seen, you know, like top five lists of, you know, what people think their best, the, the best Pokemon in draft are, or, um, you know, people put out their own videos, or someone say like, this is the best Pokemon draft, this is second best. It's usually pretty subjective. I know my personal list is probably going to be different than your personal list, or there's going to be at least a little bit of a discrepancy. Um, and I know across three people is definitely going to be different across four people for sure. Um, so I thought it would be a fun project to actually put out a Google form. Um, I plugged it on Discord, I plugged in all the servers I'm in, whether it be the Wi-Fi leagues that I'm in, or all the showdown leagues that I'm in, or showdown servers that I'm in, and things like that, and kind of pull the community and see what their general consensus was in the top five. Because while there is going to be discrepancy, not every person is going to think X Pokemon is fifth best. Um, if an overwhelming majority of people do, I feel like it's kind of conclusive, or as conclusive as we can really get in a discussion like this on what the top five best Pokemon in the draft format are. Um, so that's what I did and that's what today's video is going to be. It's going to be exploring those um, results, I'm kind of talking about the Pokemon very briefly um, on what makes them good and things like that. Um, big shout out to everybody who, you know, helped me out and took time out of their day to vote on it. I think we had 77 respondents in just like a day and a half before I'm recording this, which is really, really mind blowing. Let me go know if you guys would want to see more of these. This is going to be um, in a national deck setting too. So as you can see in the thumbnail, uh, there's a mega Pokemon right there. Um, and Megas were taken into consideration, things that aren't in the Nat Dick, so someone's like, Breloom is the third best Pokemon. He's not in Sword and Shield, obviously. Um, and this obviously isn't like a BDSP list either, because it's not really, you know, the best draft thing meta game, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it. One more little housekeeping thing. Um, what I did when I kind of made these, uh, you know, gave the options for this list is I went through a recent draft league I was in and I kind of looked through the first couple rounds. I gave like 20 options of, you know, top five Pokemon um, that you can, you know, vote for. And obviously most of them aren't going to get votes um, or many votes at all. I, I think almost close to every mon got like a vote at least once. But um, regardless, there were some Pokemon that I ended up missing and I wanted to cover those now. And uh, one of them in particular, I think definitely could have been in the top five. Another one, it's uh, another two, it's pretty debatable. And the fourth one, I don't think it really would have been there. But I wanted to at least mention it because, um, you know, transparency is important. Because um, there were four that I feel like I definitely did miss. And just forget to put on the sheet. And um, shout out to the people who kind of made it aware to me. I apologize. I'll try to be a little bit more thorough if I do another list like this. Um, but the first one I want to talk about is Zamazenta. Uh, Zamazenta Crown in particular. And that might sound a little like, oh a lot of uh, Wi-Fi people, um, if you watch a lot of the Wi-Fi content, you're not seeing leagues that are allowing Zamazenta other than the BBL and like SBU, which does S tiers. Um, but in the Nat Dex metagame, it, it really isn't, it's probably not even the best Pokemon in the format. Now, I do think it's top five for sure, um, but it is definitely balanced out um, and seen in a ton of uh, draft leagues throughout the Showdown community. I've only personally played in two that have a lot I've used it myself, actually, and it's great. I would probably put it in my top five if I put it on this list. However, at least in my immediate scope, I didn't think of a lot of leagues of, of uh, allowing it. But, you know, the more it was kind of pointed out to me, the more I realized a lot of leagues are really toying with the fact that Zamazenta is allowable. I've seen some leagues complex ban Howl, and I think that's really stupid. Um, and I don't think it's top five without that, which sounds really dumb because Howl isn't the best move in the world. But I figured I'd at least mention it. Zom was left off this list just because initially when I was running it, I didn't think enough leagues were really uh, testing it at this point. Um, but the more it was brought to my attention, I realized that it was. Next up is going to be Clefable, and this is a big oversight on my part. I'll be honest, I don't know how I forgot this one. This one, the next one, I'm like, oh, you're stupid. Clef's obviously a phenomenal Pokemon, um, and I think it is definitely borderline top five in a lot of people list, people's lists, and I think it definitely would have gotten a ton of votes, so I figured I would at least mention that. Clef is obviously incredibly reliable, very versatile, fills many roles on the team, is just an overall great Pokemon, so I missed that one, and Gliscor. Gliscor is phenomenal in that Dex metagame, and I completely forgot to mention it. Over plenty of mods, it's a lot better than, um, and especially in a metagame with no hidden power. Like, I, I think that was definitely a big, big oversight on my end. And the fourth one I want to mention was Aegislash. I don't think Aegislash is top five. I think most people don't think Aegislash is top five. However, it is better than some of the Pokemon I did give options for. Um, if you are interested in the results of the poll, or if a bunch of people want to, like, see the actual data, let me know. I'll leave something in the description. I'll, like, edit it later on or put something in the comments. I'm not going to do that right now because I don't know if anybody really cares about that stuff too much. Um, but yeah. That's enough rambling. I'm gonna kind of jump in. I have four honorable mentions, Pokemon that didn't necessarily win any votes, um, but were very close and got consistent amount of votes throughout the entire polling process. Uh, you know, one through five, they had a decent amount, and especially towards the tail end, they had a good chunk of votes. And I was actually pretty surprised to see some of these not actually make the top five. The way I did it is um, number one, whatever had the most amount of votes on a specific poll would win 
you know, that slot. And uh, some Pokemon, I believe it was uh, our number three winner, also run number four, but because it won the three poll, I put it as number three and then I did the next closest at four. Other than that, it's pretty like this Pokemon had the most in one, this one had the most in two. Um, and I figured that was the best way to do it. Maybe there's a better way to do it, but I'm no mathematician, unfortunately. But these four honorable mentions were Pokemon that had a consistent amount of votes throughout the whole voting process, um, but just didn't end up getting that final vote. I won't be giving the percentages for these, but I will give the percentages for the top five. With that being said, thanks for the long, uh, sitting through the long rambled intro. Um, our first honorable mention is going to be Deoxys Speed. I'm very surprised that this thing didn't get top 10. I know a lot of people um, had this in their top 10, and I think that's definitely, definitely fair. This Pokemon is absolutely phenomenal, especially if you're taking into account the fact that this thing just recently got Psycho Boost back in uh, BDSP. Now, I don't know if a lot of leagues are allowing that yet or if they're waiting, uh, you know, for different things to roll around, maybe a home update, things it going into Swish, something like that, because it's only in BDSP that I can use it now. Um, but even without Psycho Boost, this Pokemon's phenomenal. That 180 base speed tier is ridiculously insane. Um, the amount of Scarfers you can very easily outspeed, or the matchups where you can just go max Fizz Def because you don't need any speed. You go minus speed and outspeed some things sometimes. I remember a mock I ran one time where I was like mixed Dio, but I didn't want to cut into my bulk um because i had like superpowers something like that so i just went minus speed and i think i outsped like it was like some random 112 mine. i think it was like perugly or something terrible um but i outsped it still and i was fine with not outspeeding the scarfers which is obviously great it has very very solid coverage and obviously psychic plus um superpower or um focus blast shadow ball ice beam thunderbolt bunch of stuff like that it can nasty plot or calm mind up reliable recovery and recover um it has spikes and rocks for sure now in bdsp it also got t spikes so that's another added thing for counting in that I mean, it has like energy ball, cool things like that. It can taunt, um, so ridiculously fast taunter. And also has seismic toss and nightshade along with a lot of status. So uh, DOS is a great, great stall breaker in that regard. And just being nice, fast taunt or knockoff as well, which is another great option. Um, this Pokemon is just, with its speed tier, allowing you to kind of tweak the EVs. It really does, uh, you know, make up for its pretty lackluster stats and all other stats. Uh, make up for its pretty bad bulk as well as, you know, its weaker offensive stats. And, um, you know, really wreak havoc on opposing teams. So I, I see why it makes the top, uh, at least in the honorable mentions, and definitely potentially top five in a lot of people's lists. Next up is Landers Incarnate. And this is one I personally actually had as I think my number five pick. Um, so this was definitely in part, it, important. It was definitely um, interesting to see for sure. Now this is Sheer Force Lando. I'm obviously not talking about Sand Force. It's a pretty general consensus. The Lando eye isn't too broken to allow in a Nat Dex uh, setting at this point. But this Pokemon, it is it is so ridiculously hard to have a team that switches inconsistently to Landers Incarnate. Um, the plethora of options you can go with, whether it be physical, special, mix, weird gravity sets if you're playing the random Celly or Skarm or Corviknight. Um, just nice uh, U-turn momentum. It can set up rocks pretty easily. It can knock off checks. Um, and it can just kind of earth power and sludge wall or uh, I believe it gets Sludge Wave, actually. Um, Lando Wrist. Why am I forgetting that out of all things to forget? And Sludge Wave and Grass Knot and, you know, a bunch of cool different options like that Rock Slide. Uh, along with that Sheer Force ability and potentially Life Orb, it is so hard to set up, switch into this thing. As well as, uh, obviously, the ability to Rock Polish up and clean through teams that way. So, I've seen Landers and Carnot do phenomenally in a lot of leagues and I've used it pretty well myself. I really do think it's an amazing Pokemon. I had it in my top five, but I see why other people, you know might put it there might not put it there because there's some amazing pokemon ahead this thing um so let's go ahead and keep it going to our third honorable mention which is going to be garchomp this is a pokemon i actually kind of slept on when making my own list but i definitely see why people would put it in the top five this thing is so great man um offensively it's a demon with just that impossible to switch into stab and ground and dragon with its great natural bulk ridiculously strong 130 attack and that 102 speed tier is so nice just barely outpacing those that plethora of base 100s that you know run around the metagame pretty consistently you can source ends up and sweep through teams like that especially in addition to scale shot this game i think i really said over the top now like it sucked garchomp losing z moves um for sure in between gen 7 and gen 8 but scale shot definitely puts it right back up there for me this pokemon's so so hard to switch into um with combinations of its stabs plus fire coverage for you know the you know the occasional levitating steals as well as rock coverage as well being really solid it's a great rocker and fat chomp is also great like helmet tank chomp with like endure and dragon tail and things like that throwing off toxics and being annoying um those pseudo legendary stats really do help it out a ton in that role as well so bar chomp is a very versatile pokemon and it does everything that it is tasked with very well a mixed life orb is also really 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 great whether it be fire blast or draco or something like that um you can really really break through a lot of really really fat builds 
with just owning a Garchomp. It's incredibly hard to beat, especially with no hidden power this gen. Um, you can set up on Pokemon that typically would have kind of stuffed you a little bit before. You might be able to get a, a Swords Dance or two before you start attacking it, which is obviously great. Um, something that comes to mind is like, you know, a weakened Tango. Tango just takes a little bit of chip. You can potentially set up two, uh, two Swords Dances on it. Um, you know, provided you don't get like, you know, Sleep Powder or something like that. But regardless, really, really great Pokemon. Um, ridiculously hard to deal with defensively. And then our last honorable mention, I know you thought Mawile was going to be in the top five because it is in the thumbnail, but Mawile is not in the top five. It just missed out, unfortunately, but this Pokemon is so ridiculously good. Talk about a ridiculous stab combination that is so hard to switch into. Um, that Steel Fairy stab alongside, you know, elemental coverage and like Fire Fang and Ice Punch and I believe Thunder Punch as well as Psychic Fangs, Brick Break, Focus Punch. Um, it can SD up, it can um, Sucker Punch through things as well for great priority and knock off to knock off items. Um, that on top of having that huge power attack stat, I mean huge power ability, uh, makes this thing almost impossible to deal with. There are very, very few things that can re uh, reliably check Mawile. Realistically, I don't think there's anything that can consistently switch into Mawile over the course of a game. It's a little bit more difficult to use for a lot of newer players, especially due to that really lackluster speed tier. But despite it not being the bulkiest thing in the world, that phenomenal defensive typing and Steel Fairy as well really does help it out in potentially getting it some free turns to throw off some attacks. And if you can position it correctly, get it in for free, make a few aggressive doubles, click one prediction based move, click that raw focus punch on that Steelix coming in or sub up and sub focus punch through it. Um, you're really going to have a good time and Mawile is such a fun Pokemon to use if you can play aggressively enough with it and, uh, you know, find those free opportunities. Now, we've been rambling. I've been recording for 11 minutes and 40 seconds as of me saying this. Um, and it is finally time for us to get into the top five. Before I go into this, go into the comments real quick. Tell me what you think the top five is or what you think the top five should be. Um, definitely let me know. I'll just go ahead and drop my top five down there as well. I mentioned earlier that I had Landers and Cardin on my five. So I'll definitely drop mine down there. Let me know what you think of my list. Um, but this is more so about what the general community kind of thinks about these Pokemon, what is in the top five and things like that. So with that being said, let's go into number five with 19.5% of the votings for the fifth slot. We have Mega Gallade and I feel it, man. Um, this Pokemon's absolutely insane. You want to talk about, again, a trending uh pattern we kind of have here is really really strong offensive stab combinations and psychic plus fighting is so hard to switch into in conjunction with knockoff and again elemental punches things like that with that 165 base attack stat as well as 110 base speed um and a chunky aspidef stat in 115 golly this thing is really really hard to deal with it can bulk up and be fat and annoying you can even pass around wishes and wisps if you really uh you know do get hyper specific with the build and the matchup calls for it or you can just do what Gallade does click close combat and zen headbutt and knock off and just wreak havoc on teams you have shadow sneak for priority which is obviously great um and again that great natural bulk especially in that spin up stat is mwah, absolutely amazing i believe this pokemon is like the second strongest like non uber pokemon stat wise or no third strongest non uber pokemon stat wise in attack i want to say i think it goes mega hair across kartana oh no because there's garchomp here black and then Gallade. so it's number five which i guess makes sense because number five on this uh list right here but this thing's coverage in conjunction with its speed and ridiculous attacks that great natural bulk it is so hard to deal with a mega Gallade with a well properly uh rounded team supporting it and uh you know i definitely feel this thing in the uh in the top five i think that definitely makes a ton ton of sense um for sure now with number four on the list with 16.6 percent of the votings and honestly Something that pretty surprised, uh, pretty heavily surprised me uh, that it was actually this low on the list is going to be Tornadus Therian. Uh, Torrenty, best ability in the game, regen. Uh, regen is ridiculously stupid, especially in a generation where Torn doesn't have to worry about taking Rock Ship anymore if you play it smartly and you don't get it knocked off. Uh, you can slap a Boots on there and you're going to knock off U-Turn on Hurricane, an entire team, and never die and be an absolute nuisance. Um, it is so ridiculously hard to keep a tornado consistently low and in range of your attack. But it is really hard to just Oko this thing in one attack because it has great natural bulk. And with that 121 speed tier, you can uh, invest pretty heavily into your bulk a ton. Um, and you often don't need a lot of special attack investment even for your hurricanes because just it's a strong base power move. And I think that's something that Torn benefits from is while it does have a lot of inaccurate moves like Hurricane, Focus Blast, Heat Wave to an extent, I suppose. Um, they are all pretty darn high base power. So you don't necessarily need to overly invest in them to do the sufficient damage that you need if you run your calcs and things like that not only 
Is it that phenomenal taunting knockoff U-turn, you know, hurricane pivot that just, you know, really, really bullies and annoys teams? You also have access to Nasty Plot and that plus, like I said, Focus Blast, Heat Wave, Grass Knot, Hurricane, moves like a Dark Pulse, I guess, and Psychic if you really end up needing it. I don't see what you would need it for, but you know, the matchup might come along. Uh, but this thing has really, really solid coverage. Again, really high base power moves and that way to double its special attack stat. And especially in the scenario where you're in with Torn, you nasty pull it up, you claim your KO, then something comes in for free that you can't Oko, just do it again later. You'll get your health back. Just go ahead and switch on out, big dog. Um, so Torn is ridiculously, ridiculously hard to deal with over the course of the game. Now, it doesn't need to run boots. If you have sufficient hazard removal or your opponent has very lackluster rock sitters, like someone like myself, I uh, I always draft pretty lackluster rocks options in a Gen 8 format because I'm always like, ah, boots. But, you know, that can bite me in the ass sometimes because I'm on like Torn, could be like, ah, their rock sitters are terrible this game and I have a good way of getting rid of them even if they do come or I just don't think they're going to come. I'm running AV Torn. I'm running Life Orb Torn. What it used to run back in the day, you know, things like that. Um, I'm running Leftovers Torn for that residual. I'm running Helmet to punish you for you turning on my whole team, things like that. Um, kind of doing what Torn did last gen. Now, losing Z moves did suck, but I think all of the additions and buff Torn got this gen um, really makes it a phenomenal Pokemon. Don't tell Kurt I said this though, because I don't think he'll be friends with me if he hears that I like Torn D. Um, cause I know he does not cause he can't hit a hurricane to save his life. Now, third up, we have Mew. Mew ended up actually getting, uh, 23.4% of the votes here. It also had a little bit more than Torn in, uh, you know, vote four, but because it had an overwhelming majority in three, I decided giving Mew three, which just made the most sense. And then giving the next, you know, highest vote in Torn at 16.6 .6 made the most sense. We have Mew here and, um... Definitely, again, a very, very versatile Pokemon. Just versatility to a T. Um, a Pokemon that learns every move or pretty damn close to it. Whether it be, you know, Fat Stallbreaker Mew, which I think is the personally, you know, the best set. Just Seismic Tossing or Super Fanging and Will O Wisping and Taunting and Recovering all over your team for hours and hours and then not being able to KO it because that base 100 bulk across the board. Or you could be Nasty Plot or Fat Calm Mind and slowly bully a team. Or you can be Dragon Dance this gen with a plethora of coverage moves, a lot like Torn, that can be very, very high base powered like Flare Blitch, Triple Axle. Um, you can Psychic Fang through teams as Stab as well, which is great. Again, all the offensive coverage you'll need, all the defensive utility you'll need, minus like, I guess, Wish or something like that. Um, and you can spike up this gen, which I think is incredibly nice for you also. Uh, it might be a Stallbreaker matchup where you don't need the status and you can run t spikes or T-spikes in this thing now and be in a great spot. You can Stealth Rock. There's a Pokemon that can mold itself to um, really, really have its strengths, um, have the have the weaknesses of your teams become its strengths, I guess is a way to say it or um, something like that. I don't know, maybe I could have said that more elegantly. Use a great Pokemon. It's a Pokemon I really love using um, and definitely deserves a spot on this list for sure. Just the sheer versatility that it offers in a format that's all about counter teaming and um, building a team that your opponent doesn't deal with necessarily as opposed to a format like a standard smoke on metagame where Mew has to find the best set for, you know, um, that metagame. But there's typically a more hyper, you know, focused Pokemon that fills that role a little bit better. That's why you think you see a lot less, you know, Mew usage smoke on wise but you see it just, you know, way, way up there in the draft metagame. So again, definitely makes sense. I think Mew is a great, great Pokemon. Our second Psychic type on this list too, which is definitely really interesting. Okay, we're moving on to two. Number two with 48.1% of the votes in slot number two, we have Big Urshifu Single Strike. Now these next two Pokemon I include on the list, they are banned in some leagues and some leagues they are allowed. I'd say, I'd say it's probably like 60, 70% allow. 40, 30% ban, um, but I wanted to include them regardless, uh, and Urshifu Single Strike won the second place voting pretty darn convincingly, I might say. That stab, um, that stab combination Fighting Dark, again, where minus Mew, and I guess Torn, um, minus Mew and Torn, and I guess the Ox, everything else has had a great dual typing that is very hard to deal with over the course of the game, and Urshifu is that Pokemon, with having options to, in Wicked Blow and Close Combat as its main stab tools to really just bully so so many different pokemon the only uh typing that really switches into that effectively is going to be fairy types which you do have coverage for in poison jab and iron head and you can you turn out as well um but a lot of them don't want to take a base 130 attack choice banded wicked blow over the course of the game especially if you get up rocks or spikes or something like that okay or especially if they don't take the turn to wish or um you know recover up the turn prior uh they're gonna have a bad time with urshifu and that definitely makes sense the thing is so ridiculously strong Two effectively base 120 power moves um, as its stab options in close combat and Wicked Blow. Wicked Blow is only base 90, but it does crit, um, which basically misses it up to 120. It's great having a move that's 100% accurate, no drawback, 
always crits and doesn't really have immunities. Um, it's a ridiculously spammable move. And I definitely think um, it makes sense to put this thing at number two um, for sure. Really, really hard to switch into. Now, to, it's not as versatile as a Pokemon as you're going to see as uh, a lot of the other Pokemon that have been on this list thus far. Um, but it does what it does so damn well, whether that be Band, Scarf, Life Orb. You might see a weird occasional bulk up set up on a few bulk up Urshifus um, throughout the gen. But for the most part, I'm Band, Life Orb, or um, Scarf, and I'm really punching holes. You get Sucker Punch's priority. 97 is still a pretty solid speed tier. You have solid physical natural bulk, but that's kind of lacking. Um, but you're just going to click buttons with this Pokemon. That is his whole damn thing. Um, and it does it ridiculously well. So, again, makes a lot of sense. Now, going on to number one. I'm sure most of you know what Pokemon won number one. But I do want to emphasize to the degree in which it won number one. Because 48% of people thinking Urshifu is the second best Pokemon is pretty dang high. Um, it eclipses... Our last one, Mew, by what, 20, uh, 25% about? A little less than 25% if my math isn't terrible. Um, that's pretty insane. That was like the next highest, you know, percentage of votings we got for a single Pokemon in the tier. Um, showing that there's a lot of debate for these things. This next Pokemon blew those out of the water. Absolutely blew them out of the water and is far and above, in my opinion, the best Pokemon in the draft league format. I voted for it and 71.4% of other people voted for it. And that is going to be big Dragapult, the pseudo legendary from Gen 8. This Pokemon's insane. I haven't gotten to use it since the beginning of Gen 8 and um, it's very upsetting because I really want to use it again. Um, this Pokemon's amazing, man. 142 base speed is such a ridiculous, ridiculous stat. It's a lot like when I said with Dio Speed or Torn. Um, really lets you play with your EVs and things like that really, really efficiently. Getting the right spreads for your team, getting you know, that extra bulk or if you're mixed, getting you know, that extra attack in either which stat. Um, it can get momentum in you turning Ghost is the best offensive typing in Gen 8, in my personal opinion, with the removal of Pursuit. You can realistically spam Shadow Ball pretty freely against most teams, because a lot of bulky normals aren't going to want to switch into Drag Bolt, you know, dropping a big Drake or hit him with a fat Dragon Darts or something like that, or just U-Turning, or just Willow Wisping down its checks and Willow Hexing through teams. Um, this thing is ridiculously versatile in that sense. It could be physical, it could be special, it could be specs, it could be uh, boots, because it doesn't want to take hazards, it's just going to U-Turn around forever and ever and ever um it can be dragon dance it can be um like a willow hex set or like a thunder wave hex set which is obviously very solid i've seen sub disable put in a ton of work and really bully a lot of passive mons and passive normals and things like that um it can u-turn around like i said this this thing is really really solid it actually has dual screens as well which is another really uh great option um it has water coverage for some reason it has fire coverage for pesky seals i want to switch in on dragon stabs um and again just the ability to u-turn out on a lot of those checks get another pokemon just be that annoying fast nuisance that just seems so ridiculously hard to kill and so ridiculously hard to switch into. Despite that base 100 special attack, which is what it's using most of the time, to be completely honest, because it's lackluster physical coverage and lack of a um, reliable ghost physical stab. But ghost is one, again, such a spammable offensive typing in Gen 8, as well as the fact that you're going modest most games. Um, and if you're modest specs, you're still hitting very hard with Shadow Ball because it is hard to switch into and you're faster than everything. So it's not like, you know, another strong ghost type that um, is liable to get revenge by something else faster or something like that. That on top of having solid natural bulk in 88, 75, 75, um, it really doesn't get much better. Uh, this Pokemon is absolutely amazing and I think it definitely deserves that 71.4 percentage of votings it got. But that's the top five list. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you're like, dude, Torrenty's terrible. Why is it on the list, Kurt? Um, <laughs> if you think, you know, stuff like that, uh, or if you really disagree, or you think like, wow, I can't believe you didn't mention X Pokemon, let me know in the comments below, as well as let me know if there's another, you know, uh, question you would like me to pull people on Discord, um, the draft community as a whole, whether it be like the best Pokemon of X typing, or um, I, I don't know, there's, there's really a ton of options that I can't really think of off the top of my head that we could really end up doing. Uh, let me know which ones you would uh, enjoy the most. If you guys enjoyed this video, please drop a like. I would really appreciate it. Um, as well as dropping a sub. I'm really close to 600 subs. And if you guys could help me out along that journey, I would really appreciate it a ton. But with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Later.